Hi guys, Teacher Kelly here. I want to talk to you today about unit assessments. Stay tuned. Why am I talking to a new teacher about unit assessments? Well, that's because in about my first five classes, I would say one or two of them were unit assessments. I barely had any experience to begin with, so I was a little panicked when I saw this UA come up, and then I thought, okay, I got this. And then I clicked review material, and when I did that and I saw there was 40-something slides, oh, I thought I was going to have a meltdown. <laughs> but there was no need to panic. There are a lot of slides in there. So there are two types of unit assessments. The first one is halfway through the unit. There are 12 lessons in one unit in our major courses. The first mid-unit assessment is lesson six. So that'll be your first clue. If it says lesson six, it's going to be a mid-assessment. Lesson 12 is the last assessment at the end of the unit, it is the end of the unit assessment. And the first mid-assessment is not very long. There are review slides in the front, and then there is the assessment towards the end. Now the review, you can have them as much as you want. Um, help, 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 help. Now, when you get to the actual, like how you know, when you get to the actual assessment, it will say in the teacher tip question one, it'll have in parentheses a Q and a one, and that's how you know it is for question one. There, if you are doing level two, most of them will say with minimal teacher help or with teacher help or just cannot do it at all in the little rubric. Where is this rubric? I'm so glad that you asked. If you are in the classroom, uh, especially if you have time before, go in and look at it. You just have to click on Add Feedback, and on the side, on the right side of your screen, it will stick. So it'll stay open during class. So before class, read through the rubric so you know what you're looking for. But during class, you can just click, 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 click as they do each of those questions. It is amazing. Now, there are a lot of slides. There's like 40-something, sometimes more slides. Uh, but a lot of them are filler slides. Uh, what I mean by that is most of them follow some type of game or theme like, oh, no. Kelly has lost all of her toys. Let's help her find them. Or Dinah wants to visit America. Let's go show him all of the landmarks in America. And they usually have a map that is kind of throughout the whole slide. And you're just looking at it. There's nothing to do on that slide. And then there's like a whole title slide for each level that will say like level one. Sometimes there's words or a sentence and sometimes there's not. So there's two where you're not really doing anything. Not that you can't do something with them, but there's not an assessment question on there. And then when they have finished a level, most of them have about five levels, some have six levels. And at the end of each of those levels is another slide that's like, congratulations, you found the yo-yo. <laughs> or you showed Dino the Statue of Liberty. So there's really not a lot to do. Um, it's just kind of a filler slide. So I think if you go through and count, it's just about the same as a normal class. It's just a little panicky when you see those numbers down at the bottom. Now there's a, sort of a built-in reward system like in a regular class, um, except that it's kind of throughout. Um, as I was talking about earlier, you either have to find the toys, so as you go along, they're rewarded with those toys. And at the end of each of those levels, that's when I give my stars. Um, usually, like I said, there's five. So if there's six, I have to get a little creative. But usually, especially in the lower ones, there's five. Um, occasionally, there's only four levels, so you got to throw in that extra star somewhere. But usually, um, I just give it like, oh, you found the yo-yo, you got a star. And there you go. 
Now, there's debate on whether you should do a second reward, and it kind of depends. If my student is really, really struggling, and I'm like, I don't think we're going to get done in time, then I don't generally. I try to get it in there at least once, but for the most part, I do not. But it is helpful for those kids that fly through those assessments. Because those assessments are not very long, some of them only have like one or two questions. And I'm like easy questions like, this is a dog. That is a dog. And then you're done. Well, if your student has learned the material, that's not going to take very long. So because of that, you still need to extend just like you would in any other class. And that's the takeaway here. Just because it's a unit assessment doesn't mean you necessarily need to treat it any different. You still need to extend if the student needs it. Yes, you, if it is a question where they, they need to do it independently, the rubric says independently, give them a chance to do it independently. But I'm not going to let them struggle. So I'm still going to mark them down that I had to help them or they couldn't do it at all. And I really had to step in there, but I try really hard to give them at least one of those points, one of those two points. And so I want them to still work on that material, even though it is a UA. So you can still extend and you can still help. Just get them to answer the way the rubric wants them to first. And then if they can't do it, then you can step in and help them. But the reward comes in handy for those that are really fast it kind of helps slow you down a little bit. Most of my rewards, not all of them, but most of my rewards are related to whatever we're talking about. So if we're talking about landmarks, I have a whole reward showing a bunch of landmarks in America. If we're talking about landmarks in America, if it's toys, then I'm going to have gifts of animated toys and things like that. You know, I love Google Slides and that's where I get most of my stuff. So again, if you haven't headed over there, you need to head over to the Google Slides group. But the reward, it gives them a chance to choose a number, or if it's a teacher versus, then again, you still gotta choose a number, but it gives us a chance to go, oh, look at this, whatever this is. And it kinda, we talk about it. Um, today was not a UA, but today we're talking about what are you wearing, and um, Dino was skiing, so we talked about, oh, what is Dino wearing today? Dino is wearing, cause we were talking about is wearing, it was a, upper level student. Now your lower levels, you have to be careful, you know, the incidental language, but it's still there. You can still extend just like you would any other lesson. So don't panic. Now, another thing that you're going to see a lot of is projects. And you're going to hear that most of the time, these students do not have their projects. Why is that? We don't know. However, they are told about it so many, many, many times. They are told about it in lesson five. They are told about it in lesson six. They are told about it in lesson 11, and it's in their workbooks. So they should not be surprised by this, especially if they have a lot of classes under their belt, they should have experience doing these projects. But sometimes, as you know, or if you're super brand new, you just, you're learning, you're pacing, you saw something about a project at the end, but they put it after the goodbye slide, and I forgot to skip it over the goodbye slide and go over the project. It happens, and that's the reason why it's in there so many times. So don't panic. If you forgot on lesson five, somebody's gonna remember on lesson six or lesson 11. And even if by chance they missed it all three times, again, if they're doing the homework, it is in the workbook. But this is what I do in class. When it comes up in lesson five, I go, oh, you are in lesson five. Well, we just finished lesson five and you have all the way to lesson 12. Your project will be due in lesson 12. Let me type that in the chat box so you remember lesson 12. Show your teacher your project. And then it sends it to them in the chat box too, in case they watch back. Uh, but I go, oh, in lesson 12, your teacher will say, oh, do you have your project? Or she might say, do you have your homework? Show me your homework. And you go. And then you talk about your, your project that you did. Now, for the lower ones, I have an example. 
But they have examples now. At the end, they have pictures with them. So you'll see like what looks like a rubric where it has option one, option two, and option three. But if you keep clicking, then you'll see actual examples of option one, option two, and option three. I do not read all that word for word, especially not with my little ones. I'll just go, draw a picture of fine, sad, happy, tired, and show your teacher and tell her about them. Or I might say something like, you know, if it's a project about drawing your family, draw your family and show your teacher. Okay. Now the upper ones, I can talk a little bit more. I can tell them, oh, you know, you're in lesson six. You got all the way to lesson 12, which option we go over the options. And then I, in the upper ones, I'll tell them you chose option three. And then I try to remind them in feedback, but I also tell those other ones, the upper ones. I mean, you know, if you're in five or six, if you want to change your mind before lesson 12, even though I put option two, maybe you start doing it and you're like, you can change it. It's not set in stone. So this has come in real handy. I got this in one of the Facebook groups. I want to say it was the videos and props group. So if you have not found that one yet, you need to get over there and find it. So what do I do if they don't have their project? You said they should have their project. Well, they should. But many, 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 many don't. They're very busy. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't understand. I don't know. But this is what you can do. Um, for me, it depends on the type of assessment I'm doing. If it looks like there's a lot of reading or a lot of content, then I'll say, at the end of class, we will draw it on the blank slide because usually there's a blank slide. If it is something that I'm like, oh, we're gonna have plenty of time, then I might stop and do it right at the beginning of class. You know, if it's just draw a picture of your family, let's jump to that blank slide. Draw a picture of your family. Tell me about your family. And then you can choose appropriately for the rubric, whether they should get one point or two points, depending on what you think. And then, um, if you run out of time, which has happened to me, I knew this student um, because I'd been teaching her was um, a kind of a slow worker. Um, she was not expected to read at this level, everything on, on the screen, but she did work a little slower. And so I knew I really wanted to get through the assessment first, and then if we had time at the end to do the project, so we did but we did not have time to do the project at the end. So I just said that in feedback. I, I put zeros and said she did not have her project. Um, otherwise she would have had a perfect score because she scored well on everything else. Um, I had hoped to have time at the end of class and we just did not have time at the end of class. Because if they had another teacher that had done that, they might've been like, well, why didn't you do that? But we just did not have time. So make sure I note that in feedback so the parent knows. If we did it, then I, in class, then I say, oh, well, we did it in class and, you know, it, I may only give one point for that project because, you know, or there's two questions, uh, which total four points. So, you know, half points, giving them two points, then I'll note that in there. Um, if I felt like it was that, if it was something super simple that they could draw really easy and they drew really well on the slide. I don't know. I just, just kind of a judgment call in there because these U, UAs is just information. It doesn't keep them from going to the next lesson or the next unit. So even if they totally bomb it, whether they need perfect or get a zero on every question. So, and remember that on your UA feedback, once it is submitted, you cannot edit it like you can a regular class. I know I've mentioned that before, but I want to put it separate in this video. Once you hit submit, you cannot edit it. You can send in a ticket, but, and you know, let them know, oh my gosh, I need to blah, 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 blah. Or I meant to blah, 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 blah. But you just can't do it yourself. You just can't go back and you can go back and view it. You just can't go back and edit it. So be aware of that. Let me know in the comments below which part of the UA you might still have a question about. Otherwise,
drop me a happy face. Let me know that you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and share with whomever needs to know about UAs. And stay tuned for more content next Friday. Bye!